Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to video number two in a series of three videos this week, all about getting started recording in Logic with the Apollo X Generation 2 interfaces from Universal Audio. This is in collaboration with Universal Audio, but is also inspired by the emails, comments, requests I've received for content throughout the years. All right. In the first video, I gave you a lay of the land when it comes to Apollo, the UAD console, how to get started with them so you can immediately begin recording in Logic. In this video, we're going to dive in deeper into what makes the Apollo X Generation 2 interfaces so special. Starting with number one, a deeper dive into the unison preamps of the Apollo X. Number two, I want to show you how to take advantage of the brand new auto gain feature of the Apollo X Generation 2 interfaces. So you can just throw up a mic, start playing or singing and let the UAD console, let Apollo figure out the perfect recording level for you. It's pretty awesome. Number three, I'm gonna show you how I'm going to set up some DSP effects to both monitor as well as record through. And lastly, number four, I'll show you how to get set up with a comfort effect like reverb or delay. So our performer feels, you know, like in the vibe of the song. So let's dig right into it. Okay, so what are Unison preamps? Well, Unison is Universal Audio's exclusive preamp system that transforms the clean inputs of your Apollo into the most coveted preamps, channel strips, guitar and bass amps, and pedals around. The Unison preamps literally adapt themselves in terms of their physical input impedance, the gain staging response, other parameters of the Apollo's mic preamp hardware to match the emulated hardware's design characteristics. With your typical audio interface, you would set the preamp level and then just hit record in Logic Pro. For example, I'm going to ask my performer to start playing his acoustic guitar, and as he plays, I'm going to dial up the preamp gain until I see what looks like a healthy level on the meters in the UAD console. Of course, it is completely acceptable to record through a clean preamp. However, when you have the whole world of studio hardware at your fingertips, why not take the advantage of running your tracks and recording your tracks through these coveted pieces of hardware, a preamp that could add a little texture, a little vibe, just a little more shaping to the sound that can get it closer to the end result you're seeing in your mind. In this case, I think I'll load the Neve 88 RS channel strip. The Apollo input changes its response to match that of the actual hardware. From there, you can dial in your sound and then record. Now let's dial up the preamp gain once again. And just like that, I'm able to work with a Neve console on my Mac. I don't own a console, but now I have access to this entire channel strip and preamp. The hardware has adapted itself to emulate this Neve channel strip. That's pretty cool. Now, the setup for recording audio has been like this for a very long time, right? I mean, you set up a microphone, you start playing in front of the microphone, and then you adjust the preamp gain until you see a healthy level on the meter that's not clipping. But when you're recording yourself, Things get trickier, right? I mean, let's say you're a self-recording drummer. Well, you have to be playing the drums to set the level while also simultaneously be at the interface setting preamp levels. That's pretty tough. Let's say acoustic guitarist that also sings. So you're playing guitar and singing at the same time and also adjusting preamp gain. Or let's say you're hosting a podcast with multiple guests. Would it be nice if your interface could just listen to the audio and set the perfect recording level for you? Well, with the Apollo X Generation 2 interface's auto gain feature, they can. First, let me start with just the clean unison preamp. I'm going to click on the auto gain field directly below the preamp control for analog one. A window pops up, letting us know that auto gain automatically adjusts the preamp levels for recording. So you want to keep in mind your monitoring level and maybe not have it so loud because auto gain, of course, is going to automatically increase the preamp gain. And this could be quite drastic. At this moment, auto gain is set to listen to 10 seconds of audio to determine the best preamp level for the recording. This can be increased or decreased using the plus or minus five second buttons to the right, or you can click, hold, and drag on the field up or down with your mouse to increase or decrease the value here, or click on the field and type in a specific value. Below the duration, you have more options to adjust how this gain staging will occur based on a couple other parameters. You have the option to choose between whether you want UAD console and Apollo to apply the gain change while you're listening to the audio being performed through the microphone, or the gain staging can be applied after the duration of listening. 
Below that is a listening threshold that you can specify. This is set to dB full scale, and any audio that falls below the listening threshold will not be considered when setting the preamp gain for that channel. And the last option is the peak target level. This will ensure that the audio that you're recording never exceeds this set value, in this case, negative eight dB full scale. So let's give it a try right now. I'll ask my performer to start playing and I'll click on start in the auto gain window. This is perfect. We have a healthy level for the acoustic guitar. We know it doesn't exceed negative eight dB full scale. So there's plenty of headroom in case there is a louder moment later on that auto gain wasn't aware of. Now, auto gain is also available for other select unison preamp emulations. At this time, auto gain also supports the API, Neve, and SSL unison preamps. So let me once again load that Neve 88 RS channel strip. I'll click on the auto gain field, ask my acoustic guitarist to play, and I'll click start. Once auto gain is done adjusting, your preamp level is set and you're ready to record. Now that preamp levels are set, this is a perfect time to dial in processing like EQ, compression, and other effects. I've already gone ahead and applied some compression and EQ using the Neve 88 RS channel strip for my acoustic guitar. Remember, since I loaded the Neve 88 RS as a unison preamp, my choices with EQ and compression will be recorded or printed into Logic Pro. For my vocal channel strip, I've loaded the Century Tube channel strip to provide the sound of a tube preamp for my vocalist. I'm using the high band of the EQ to add a little presence, a little shine to the vocals, and the mid band is cutting right around 400 hertz to try to remove some of that boxiness. I've also engaged the opto leveler, so there's a bit of compression already going on, but I also wanna load some other DSP effects. In the first slot, I'm gonna load an 1176, and I've already set up a preset for each of these plugins, but of course the 1176 is another layer of compression just to further tighten up the vocals. Next up, I'm gonna load the Pultec EQ P1A. And with this, I'm gonna boost the high end right around 16 kilohertz with a broad curve. And I'm also gonna use that classic Pultec trick of both boosting and cutting right around 100 hertz. I'm not really trying to boost 100 hertz. I'm more trying to adjust the shape of the vocals right around the low end so it feels more stable. After that, I'll load the Pultec MEQ5, which is a classic pairing with the EQ P1A. And with this plugin, I'm going to tuck back right around 3K because at moments right around 3K, the vocalist seems to poke out a little too much. And last, I'm going to load an instance of the Oxide tape. Obviously, this emulates a tape machine, which can almost act as a compressor unto itself, gently massaging the transients while also adding new harmonics, which can just make the vocal sound richer, more full, just sound better in the mix. Now, of course, the big question, do I decide to record the effects into Logic Pro? or just monitor through the effects. When the LED is set to monitor, these four DSP effects, the 1176, the two pull text, and the oxide tape will only be in the monitoring path. So we will only hear it while recording, while these four effects will not be printed in the Logic Pro. The unison preamps with any tonal or compression changes that I've made will be part of the recorded audio. These four insert effects will not. Let me hit record right now so we can hear the before and after results. As we're monitoring through UAD console, and what gets recorded actually into Logic Pro. One time, too late, and it's all back again. Subprime, good faith that keeps running low. Halfway is too hard, and the way back is too far. It's like you said to me, you're always here, but here is in the dark. All right, so let's now hear the recorded audio in Logic Pro. One time, too late, and it's all back again. Subprime, good faith that keeps running low. Halfway too hard and the way back is too far it's like you said to me you're always here but here is in the dark all right so you can hear there's a pretty big difference there when it comes to the vocals now when i click on the insert button 
and the record LED is in red, these four DSP inserts will now be recorded into Logic Pro. So now take a listen to the raw performance without any Unison preamps, no DSP effects, and then we'll listen to the processed version with Unison and the inserts. One time, too late, and it's all back again. All right, that was the raw version. Let's now listen to the processed version. One time, too late, and it's all back again. So in this case, why not record the effects? But I get it. If you're not ready or comfortable to print effects into the DAW, in that case, if you want to be able to hear the vocals exactly the same, whether you're monitoring or recording, you'll want to load the same exact effects in the same order in Logic Pro. Then you'll want to copy the settings from your UAD console version of each plugin and then paste the settings into the corresponding plugin in Logic. This way, you'll hear the same exact sound whether you're monitoring or recording through UAD console and listening back in Logic Pro. While Unison preamps and insert effects are a great way to dial in your sound, it can be a little uncomfortable to record completely dry. In that case, you may want to apply something like a comfort reverb just to add a little ambience, a little vibe to help yourself or a performer just kind of get in that headspace. Setting up these type of sound effects in the UAD console is super simple. First, let's show the aux channel strips by clicking on the aux button on the right-hand side of the UAD console. Next, I'm going to load an instance of the pure plate reverb onto the aux one channel strip. Now I'm going to click on the send field for analog one and set the send fader for aux one to unity. I'll do the same exact thing for analog two for my vocalist. Okay, so now I'm going to reduce the level of the aux one fader. By doing this, I'm adjusting the reverb level for both the acoustic guitar and the vocals at the same time. So cool, I can just get a quick balance for both instruments. But if I determine that maybe the acoustic guitar needs a little less reverb and the vocals need a little more, I can reduce the aux one send fader for the acoustic guitar and increase the aux one send fader for the vocals. All right, now that I'm able to provide a little bit of reverb, a little bit of comfort for my performer, let's record again into Logic Pro. One time, too late, and it's all back again. Subprime, good faith that keeps running low. Halfway is too hard, and the way back is too far. It's like you said to me, you're always here, but here is in the dark. All right, that sounded pretty good to me. The problem is, is that the pure plate reverb on aux one in the UAD console is not part of the sound that gets recorded into Logic Pro for either instrument. So if we listen again in Logic. One time, too late, and it's all back again. Yeah, there's no reverb there. To get the same vibe of reverb in Logic Pro while listening during playback, we'll want to assign both channel strips for both tracks to the same bus assignment. I'll set the send level for each bus assignment to zero dB. And I'm going to load an instance of the UAD pure play onto this aux. And once again, I'll choose the acoustic guitar space preset. I'll dial down the aux one fader. And if we take a listen. One time, too late, and it's all back again. Perfect, we now have a reverb to glue these two instruments together. There you go, we've recorded acoustic guitar and vocals with two different Unison preamp models. I also applied EQ and compression at that Unison stage, so they're part of the signal that gets printed in the Logic Pro. But I also include four insert effects for the vocals to tighten things up dynamically and tonally. In the last video of this series, at the end of this week, we're going to dig into multi-track drums. I'll see you for more in the next video.